Kia ora everyone, I'm Grace, one of the developer evangelists at Xero. I'm speaking to you from the top of the world, better known as New Zealand. Today I'm going to chat with you about certification and what that process means for you. The developer evangelist team are the Xeros who work with apps to help them get certified. So I hope I'll be able to give you some good insights into how the process works and I'll cover some of the key problems and questions that I see. I will include some links in the description below, so please make sure you check those out after. Before we talk about certification, it's important that you identify which bucket of integrations you fall into. If you're building an integration to Zero Practice Manager, Zero HQ, or you're a financial service, you'll need to contact us first via API at Xero.com. If you're building an internal integration that's not publicly available and you need more than 25 connections, you'll also need to contact us. For the vast majority of integrations, you'll be building something that is publicly available and eventually it'll be listed on the Xero app marketplace. In order to become certified, there are several steps that you'll need to go through to check that you meet Xero's requirements. These steps are available on our registration page, which is the page you can see right now. As you can see here, there are several steps that you'll need to go through. In step one, you need to build the integration to Xero. As long as you aren't building an integration to Xero Practice Manager or Xero HQ, or you're not a financial service, you can get started with this straight away. We have a getting started guide, which will cover off some of the key steps that you can do to get a basic integration off the ground. I recommend having a look at our Postman example and the OAuth2 documentation. When you're building your integration, it's really important to us that you consider the user experience that the customers will have. To support you with this, we've got two guides to help you out. The first one, is the Integration Best Practices Guide. This guide will give you examples of how to implement key functionality that you might see in an average accounting integration. The other page that we have that's helpful for you is the certification checkpoints. These checkpoints cover the basis of the formal review, which will happen in step three. More on that later. The checkpoints essentially outline a generic set of requirements for you. So an example of this would be displaying an organization name. Right, so you've got an integration built, what's next? Now you'll need to onboard some beta customers. We require you to onboard at least three customers before applying for certification. These customers will give you some of the best feedback. They're going to be able to tell you where there are tweaks that need to be made. We will check to make sure that there are three customers actively using the integration. So please make sure you onboard them. Okay, so you've done that, what next? We'll now complete a review of your integration. In order to do this step, you'll have to fill out a form this form is at the bottom of the registration page. You'll see here that there are a couple of checkpoints that you'll need to fill out. This just makes sure that you understand some of the requirements before asking for us to do certification. Once you've done that, a case will be assigned to a developer evangelist. We will work with you to make sure we understand what the use case is that you're building to and ask for some basic details about your integration. Once we're happy, we'll proceed with doing a review. For the review, you'll need to provide a few basic things. This includes a login which has been set up with sufficient test data and a document that outlines the expected outcomes and goals for the customers using the integration. We will evaluate your integration against various criteria. This could include the certification checkpoints, API logs, the performance of your integration, and the use of features such as batching, paging, and webhooks. We will also evaluate your app against specific testing criteria. 
The criteria will depend on the type of integration that you've built. So, for example, if you've built an invoicing integration, we would check that the line item amounts and the total amounts match between your app and Xero. We would also check that taxes have been calculated correctly and are accurately presented in Xero. We will also check that your app can handle common errors such as a missing contact or an account code that's been deleted. Essentially, the review stage is about trying to test the robustness of the integration. If there's any feedback, we will provide this in a document for you and provide an explanation on what needs fixing. And we're always happy to answer questions on this. We often find in the review stage that apps haven't properly checked the integration against things like the certification checkpoints. These issues are ones that can be addressed before applying for certification, so we encourage you to do so. Once that feedback has been amended, the beta survey will be sent out to customers. What that means is that we will email at least five and usually up to eight customers to get feedback on your integration. It's helpful if you continue to onboard beta customers during step three. That way we can send out surveys straight away. When we receive the feedback, we may ask you to make some changes or we may pass on some feature requests from the customers. There are a few key things you'll need to consider when selecting beta customers for the survey. One, they mustn't be employees of your company. Two, they need to be distinct different customers. And three, they must be active connections. That means they've been actively using the integration for at least the last 30 days. Next up is the support documentation and landing page. These pieces of content can be built earlier in the process, but we won't check them until this point. Both of these documents are really important, so I've put together some guides to help you. The support documentation is what we consider the first port of call for support for our mutual customers. It must be publicly accessible so that it can be linked to, for example, from our API tech support team. We recognize that each integration is distinct. However, there are some common features that we expect to see in this document. The landing page lives on your product website and helps customers who are discovering the integration. If you're looking for a quick way to get started with this, we've put together a template. The template is a skeleton of the landing page and is available on our GitHub. Once you've finished both of these, we'll check that they meet the requirements. And as I mentioned, we will ask you to make changes if they're needed. Perfect, step five, done. What's next? It's publishing your integration on the marketplace. In this step, we'll provide you a form so that we can collect some marketing collateral from you. With that information, we'll build and activate your app listing page, but only if we're sure you've completed steps one through five. As you can tell from those steps, the certification process is quite robust and thorough. We really strive to have great apps in our ecosystem, and we encourage you to build the best integration you can. I'm sure you still have some questions, so I'm going to cover off some common ones I've seen. How do connection numbers work? Pre-certification, you can connect up to 25 organizations. You're free to onboard these customers when you like. The key thing here is that you mustn't market yourselves as a certified integration. After certification, the limit on the number of connections you can have will be lifted. However, you will need to complete a security assessment in order to connect more than 1,000 organizations. This is step seven. Step seven may need to be completed upfront. It depends on what type of integration you're building and we'll always tell you if this is the case. Once I'm certified, can I market the integration? Yes, you can do so on any social platform. 
The key thing is to remember to refer to our Xero partner brand guidelines when using any of our brand features. And also make sure to use the Xero connected app logo and not the Xero logo. If you want to issue a press release, you'll need to email press at Xero.com before doing so. Once I'm certified, can I make changes to my integration? Yes, in fact, we encourage it. You'll be able to improve your integration over time as you find more use cases and we release more features. The only time that we'll want to review the app again is if you release a distinctly different product. If you have any questions, then you can always contact us. And don't forget to keep your support documentation and landing page up to date too. Last question, what's the App Partner Program? We offer a range of benefits in our App Partner Program. It's a good topic that I'm sure we'll cover in another video. For now, I recommend having a look at our partner page that I'll link in the description below. So, I hope that's been helpful for you to understand the pathway to zero certification. As always, reach out if you have any questions. You can find us on developer.zero.com as Zero API on social channels or me as Grace YBR.